Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. Before I get into the sneaky spy video, I'd like to ask you all to please leave a like and comment on my video. And if you are in the espionage business, can you spyfully hit that subscribe button? Now getting into this video, as you can tell by how enthusiastic I am, this is going to be a video on how to be a spy. Now, how to be a spy in terms of EVE Echoes alone, only within the format of playing within the corpse. Now, you get three types of spies. You get a spy who gives away the fact that he is a spy by, over, uh, being, by being overactive, by dipping his finger in all the information, and by basically giving away his overall intent. And how does he give it away? By the way in which he plays. He is a good player, but you never ever see him doing his best. He is a fantastic player, but he only does his best in PvP, uh, in PvE, or in solo activities. He's never ever doing it in the corp. And that's how you generally find your spy players out. Because a lot of the activities are suspicious. And when it comes to their activity in terms of logging on and logging off, sometimes they have alts in the corp which they're spying with. Now, this is a method of gaining information. And to be an effective spy, there are other methods. There is the excellent player, the player who is your shining star within your alliance. In some corporations and alliances, the spies actually lead up to becoming leaders and owning entire corporations. So this happens from time to time, and that's because the spy is actually very good at what he does. He's actually off that level of player where he could be the leader of a corporation, and just being a spy in those situations gave him the advantage of getting to the top. Because that's how good you have to be to be a spy. Now moving on from being a spy, the next thing to think about in that whole situation is going to be how to stay invisible if you aren't that fantastic player. Now this is the most common type of spy and he can gain the most amount of information from everybody. He can even tell you how to break apart an alliance if you use them correctly. Now these aren't your ace players, these aren't your weakest players, these are your mediocre players. They are your common, your average, everyday players. The players who aren't excellent players in your top 10, the players who aren't your worst players in your bottom 10, the players who just skip around playing the game casually basically. And they can gain the most information from you and you will never ever know that they're a spy. Now how do you do this here? Number one, you allow them to tell you what they are up to, you allow them to fleet up with you, you go on activities, and that is how you gain your information. Now, this is one rule for being a mediocre spy. Try to keep your corp interactions in fleets of four or less. Now, for a fleet operation of four or less, means you're going after a dead space or you're going after a mission. Now, why do you want to keep it under four? Because when you are trying to study too many people, like 10, a full fleet, you're not going to be able to examine who fires and what distances they orbit. All of this are important things for you to note. And when you ask about something, if you ask too many people, it seems suspicious. But if you're in a team of three and they were running three different weapon systems or the exact same weapon systems, just different ranges and damages, you can ask them what they are doing without it being suspicious at all. You want to see, all you've got to say is, I'm surprised that you're all running a cyclone, but one guy is at 40Ks, the other guy is at uh, 10Ks, the next guy is at 25Ks. Uh, what are you all running? What fittings do you all run on those ships? They seem to do more damage than me. They're more efficient than me. I took so much of damage. How did you all stay safe? These are the questions that you ask as a spy. In other words, it's basic concern for a mediocre player. Normal mediocre players ask these questions all the time. Now, when you fleet up, you're going to try and fleet up with the best of the best, the aces within a corporation. Now, you will notice the ace within a corporation because of their heavy play style, the ships they're running around with, the way in which they delegate tasks, the tones in which they use when they talk, that if you're in voice comms. If you're not using voice comms, in terms of chat, you'll find that they check up and they regularly give you input on what you're going to do. These are your ace type players and they're also very good at gaining information from the player base. But you can remain invisible as a mediocre player. Number one, when it comes to playing, never ever hold back. If you are fighting your corp mates from the corp you are spying for, example, let's 
uh, this is just an example. It's not for real. Let's say it's CNK and Genesis Federation. I am the spy within Genesis Federation for CNK. Genesis Federation meets CNK in a hostile situation. Genesis Federation opens fire on CNK. I am a pivotal role within their fleet. I am the MOA shield war. Now, if I play bad, CNK will win this little skirmish, but it will give me a way as being um, suspicious in that situation. So what do I do? I switch on my shield wall. I make sure that I give it my best. The fight goes out the full nine yards. Everything happens. The fight is heavy. It's difficult. And after five minutes, the enemy is dead. And those are all my friends. They all just lost ships. They must know that I am a spy. It is my duty to make the trust within this other corp. Or we need, or you're going to need your friends to actually make Genesis trust you even more in that situation. Now, I am not within Genesis Federation. I am in CNK. I do like both alliances. I, I really admire Genesis, to be honest. And I don't want to join Genesis, to be real. I do joke around that I might want to join them one day. If anything ever happened where CNK totally dissolved, which I doubt will happen, I would generally move towards um, the Genesis Federation. I actually love the fact that they're so heavy in PvP. And joining in a corp like that means I can just join the operations all day and run around like a maniac killing players. Now, here are other things that you do to gain information very quickly. Once you've identified the top uh, members of the corp, and the best PvE and PvP players. Now, the reason why you want to know who the best PvE players are, if you affect a PvE player enough, PvE players generally seem to shy away from heavy combat. They don't like to take bigger and bigger risks because PvE players don't take too many risks unnecessarily. So what you are going to do is you're going to spy out and figure out who those good players are. And how do you find out? By playing with them. That's all. It's just enjoying yourself in the game. It's fair gameplay. It's all the fun that you want. But these are the rules to being an effective spy and not being turned against your own friends. Number one, when it comes to conversations, don't get personal. Now, a lot of people don't like getting personal regardlessly, whether they're spies or not. And that is because you have your own life problems. And the last thing you need is to make yourself get involved in someone else's situations you also don't want to make enemies of people in that way and if you are doing these things and you're staying out of these personal situations you can just say it makes you feel uncomfortable and nobody will be the wiser to whether you are a spy or a genuine individual who doesn't want to interfere with someone else's life to cause problems and that is how you make sure you don't get turned now, if you allow yourself to joke around, play around, get along with the enemy, remember you are a spy, they are your enemy, you joke around, you get along with them very well, you'll have long conversations. This is how you end up with situations where you're going to fall for the enemy, basically. You're going to be converted to your own enemy. You're jumping into their, their side of the whole fight. And then you start feeding false information to your original corp. But you obviously can't reveal this until the last minute because if you reveal it too early, they're just gonna kick you and you lose everything that you had. So that is the general way in which spies get turned. They get too personally involved in the, in the operations which they are running. Now, here is another piece of uh, advice. If you are running across social media, have at least three accounts for doing social media. That means, not social media, sorry, for doing the conversations like Discord, Line, um, Mumble, all of these things have at least three accounts so that you can keep yourself firmly pasted in that corporation with an alt, basically. Even though you don't show up in the game with your alt name, you show up in that uh, stuff as a friend from another game, someone who might join later on. And nobody will be the wiser that you are that player, provided you don't go and jump into chats and have fun with your friends the, no the way you would normally do it. So what you will do is you'll basically report in quiet to the guys who you are spying for, your leader or your, diplo your diplomacy division or your war council or your PVE council, whichever council you are spying for, you will report to them in this way. So that one little secret account that you have there, you will do this. But in order to leave the corporation is also something else. Remember, there's always the chance that they have friends in your corp. 
and what you have to do is make a big scene. And how do you make a big scene? You literally make a fight in the game between yourself and maybe the leader or one of the others who already knows what mission you're going to be put on. So this is how you'd go about it. Basically, you'll go out into a, a PvP ratting fleet and let's say it's the leader of the corporation who is sending you on this year. And let's say that, for example, he destroys a 1.8 billion uh, ship and he gets a 1.8 billion reward and he only gives you all, all 100,000, uh, 100 million ISK apiece. And that's 10 of you. And you know that it's now uh, 1.5, 2.5 billion in those regions. So you ask him why and he says no, because he's the leader, he keeps the majority. So you can make a big scene out of this. You can ask what nonsense is this? I don't like this here. Uh, basically, you complain and you make it a fight. And you let the fight drag out across the game and then let it drag out into the Discord. At which point the leader ejects you from the corp, kicks you from the chat. And that is how you secure your role in the next uh, corporation. Now, being kicked out for a fight means they're always worried about whether you're going to agree with their, their philosophy in the corp. But it is a good way to leave the corporation overall. Now, within each corporation, when you're joining in and when you're leaving, all of these things matter for a spy. When you jump to a corporation and you're working with them to get information, you sometimes don't get the corporation you wanted from an alliance. You might get the second division or the fourth division or even the 10th division within the entire alliance. And it isn't going to give you all the info that you want, but you have a portion of information. And it is also a reason why a corporation generally has a lot of spies. They have like 10, 20 spies. And on that note, just something just to pass out. I am looking for information and spies and all the stuff. But unlike the traditional spy, I don't want information that is confidential. I want information that comes after your battles. Basically, I want people to give me the reports on what's happened. So if you are watching this video and you find an enemy corp even, message me in game, give me info. You fought uh, the bees, you fought uh, the Terran Alliance, you fought Genesis Federation, OP4, CNK. Uh, it was uh, 80 on 100. It was your full corporation versus uh, the entire alliance. I want all this information. It helps me give a better war room. And at current, I have no informants at the moment because all my informants were PVE players from multiple corporations. And most of them were actually already spies for another corporation. And I'm not gonna reveal any names from the players, but PVE was just the name they gave as a code name. It did have another name for the alliance that they were making. They might actually still be in the game. They may have decided to no longer run with the PVE name, get rid of the alts that they were using to contact me with and start it up again. So you can message me in game, it's elementary72, and I'll get back in touch with you on Discord if you do give me the Discord links, or we can keep in communication across the game. I don't mind that. Now, moving on from that particular piece of the story, let's talk about advancing your play as a spy. Now, for a spy, if you aren't the mediocre player, the medium level player who's gonna take part in everything, do fairly well and not excellent in every single activity, there is another option. And that is a supreme spy, basically, the best level spy you can be. Number one, to be this type of a player, you have to be a very good player overall or you need to be um, a very strong player in gameplay and have a very strong mindset that will make you seem like someone who's going to butt heads with everyone. And you can keep this mindset moving through to the next corporation. When it comes to being a spy, rule number one is do not change your attitude. Play your regular game. Because if you change your attitude and you don't play your regular game, that is when you get caught up. And you can be a bigger liability to your corporation by getting caught. Now, let me hope that it's not that long. Yeah, it's not that long. Now, moving on for this top brass player. When you jump into an operation, you can start generating a lot of chaos. And you can start generating a lot of following to you. Now, when you jump in, you get a hold of players. You see them running a fleet. You give them opinions. You give them feedback. You give them how to set up their ships. Now, you're actually giving them fantastic information. You're getting them into the gameplay at a higher level. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to generate a buzz amongst the leadership. And eventually the leadership might even ask you how you run this, how you do this. And that's when you're starting to get into be an a rank fantastic spy. And sometimes you even get into the leadership of a corp. And it's not that difficult to do because you don't have to be suspicious and you don't have to be um, ominous. You just have to say, I'm going to go to go rat right now. Uh, see you guys. I don't have time for this chat. That's all it is. You can be an arrogant player and you can still get into the top brass of an alliance or corporation. And once you're in that position, you now have another whole aspect of gameplay at your disposal for espionage. You can sabotage the enemy. You can make them weak or you can ruin their plans. Poorly plan an assault. Make a mistake that looks like a mistake, yet you can blame it on someone else. And all those things, you just have to do a little bit of miscommunication. Make sure you speak more ambiguous in a, in a massive fleet. Let's say, for example, you're running 10 fleets and you'll need to start breaking a camp for your actual alliance. And you like, we need to run into the sector. Okay, let's see, um, Michael, I'm just giving random names. I don't know, even know if there's someone named Michael in the game, there most probably is, but that I know, I don't know. Michael, you're gonna lead your team in and you just pause. Now the pause is because it sounds like you're thinking, but before you go in, let James's team go in to break the shield wall. Now what this allowed you to do was remove 10 powerful players by letting them jump in without the shielding. So that MOA Guardian, that Phantasm, it isn't in the front giving the shielding to those players and they just jumped into a heavy combat situation. 40 players uh, around the gate, instant hit, death. They lost their entire fleet because of a poor decision. You just have to make sure you delay like five to 10 seconds. Remember it's combat and they're gonna think about fighting quickly. You cost yourself 10 ships. Why did y'all jump in? Y'all should have waited for me to complete what I was saying. Simple words I get there makes it not your fault. And it does happen like get there for real in most gameplay. Now moving on with this, the next thing that you can do is you could actually even take control over your enemy and make it a friendly alliance. Now, how do you do this here? By breaching up to the top brass, you start getting into conflicts with the other guys and you make sure that you only in conflict with one person at a time. And slowly or surely they start promoting people who are more friendly with you and more people who enjoy you as a player. And eventually it'll reach a point where the leadership will either have to favor an alliance with the guys who you say that aren't so bad, or it's going to come to the point where the leader is going to have to step down because you have more of a leadership role than they do. And that is something that does happen a lot within these games. And once it comes to this point, everything is now in your favor, in your corner, and the game is all yours. You've won that entire thing as a spy, and you are now the leader of OP4S, basically, Something like that can happen. It may have happened. I may know if it did happen, but I'm not saying that that is exactly what happened. But yeah, things like that do happen. And you purposefully go and you poke the hornet's nest, basically. Like, example, OP4S. Whether it is a rumor, whether it is reality or not, basically, a spy jumped into the alliance and he managed to get a whole corp for himself. And the spy managed to get within the corporation's head structure. And he started to push the agenda of causing fights with dangerous enemies. And he started to push the agenda with the diplomats to not make peace treaties. Now, if this really happened and if this is 100% true, this is a fantastic spy story because that spy is right now in charge of OP4S most likely, or he's in the top brass, one of those members. I don't know the name of the spy, but I do know that I was told that there's a spy who was doing this. And it wasn't even for any of the corps who they were fighting. It was for another corp on the other side of the world. So basically, OP4S was sabotaged by someone who they didn't even know was part of it. They took on too much of an arrogant stance when it came to uh, communication with other corps, and that's what cost them in the end, allowing the spy to degenerate them very fast, forcing them to take on more conflicts and favoring more of the aggressive play. Now, that's all I'm going to say. Someone did tell me that the person was a spy. And yeah, if you are in the corp and now you hear this here, 
I don't know the name of the spy. That I definitely don't know. Who gave me this information? The spy might know who he told that he's a spy. I think he told about 20 or 30 players. And they basically went and inspired the fights all over the server. They poked at the Reds to try with um, Trimark and CNK so that they couldn't take on uh, Genesis Federation in the bottom. They spurred on players to get insulting with other corporations. They basically spurred on all the fights. And that's what they did in a natural gameplay situation because it's something that naturally would happen in gameplay where you have a bit of a ego to yourself. Now, with all of this said, those are things that spies can do in the highest level of spies. Now, let me talk about a bad spy. Okay, a bad spy will join into another corporation. However, due to his allegiance with his original corporation, he won't take on big missions, he won't take on anything he won't even fight properly in PvP and he will be a borderline bad player. However, his use of ships and his use of anything that he has is always very, very poor. He doesn't think about playing anything PV PvP related. He doesn't like doing missions with high ISK rewards because he doesn't want to help the corp. And basically, you fall into that bracket where they know you're doing something unusual. You're unhappy with the corp. And if you just joined and you're in this uh, particular mindset, then you're definitely a spy. It's the easiest way to catch out a spy. Non-active, not playing with the corp, not doing anything. There's it, that's the spy. We don't have to worry about it. We know he's the spy, so what do we do? They're asking for fittings in the game. You look at the online statuses. Yeah, the spy is on. Give him the fake uh, strategy number four, number five. And you talk to the other players around him with private messages giving them the real footing set. And all of a sudden, the spy is feeding incorrect information because he's already caught out. He's only been in the Alliance for two weeks and everything that he does is so suspicious. He may be trying to lay low, but he's making himself look very big because he's too weak of a player to have been with another corp in the past. And he's too fussy and he doesn't know how to play and he isn't willing to take part in the team. And he runs away from fights and he costs you formations. Everything that he does is a negative. He isn't a fantastic player. He doesn't get along well with everybody. He's a spy. There's no reason to even think of it any further. And immediately the first thing you do is kick this guy. We already know he's a spy. Or we feed him wrong information, get his alliance to come and fight with us, beat them all up, kick him in the middle of the combat and destroy him as well. And that's all that you do because a bad spy is that noticeable. And that goes out to one or two of your bad spies who have been literally caught, but we haven't said anything to you in terms of alliances. Now, the spies I'm asking for are basically news reporters. I'm asking for a whole lot of you to get a hold of me in the game, give me your Discord links, or just feed information to me in the game. You're about to take on a massive fight against another corporation. You don't tell me before the fight. You take part in the fight, You'll lose, you'll win, you give me the information. You give it to me with as much bias as you want. I don't care about that. I'm going to extract it and make it as simple as I can. If there's a lot of bias in it, obviously some of the bias will continue on in my opinion. And that will come out in the final message. Example, like the whole CNK red story. I gave a lot of insults towards the reds. And eventually, you know who the guys were. They started messaging they gave messages uh, in in game, and then on Discord we started chatting. Okay, the, the the problem with those guys from Reds was they gave me all the information. Basically, they blabbed about anything that they knew. We know about this. We're coming to the area. We're doing that. They just give away all the information immediately, and it's not like they were my spies in that way. They were just enjoying my channel a little bit, and they accidentally gave too much of information. And I honestly do keep telling anybody who's spying for me, no secret information, please. If you have an op, tell me after the op. It makes it fair on you and fair on me, and I'm not taking advantage of the information I'm getting from you. But I'll never give away that you've given me that information. So that is about it on how to be a spy. And with this, I told you to avoid the personal relations. Remember that a personal relation can ruin your entire spy operation. And 
you can also get double stabbed for your little spy operation. Let's say, for example, you went and you spied on a corporation and you made a girlfriend or you got into a relationship with someone in the corporation because your love close spy to each other and it ends up becoming something that is what turned you. And later on, like say, the week when your old corporation decided they're going to use all the information and you've been feeding them incorrect information and you finally tell it out to everyone that you were a spy for them and that you turned on them and you gave them false information, you can lose that relationship. So everything that you've betrayed your old friends for, you can lose as well just by being a spy. So don't try to get too personally involved and keep to the basics. If you are going to be a spy and you get involved in a relationship, Remember, it's going to be extremely complicated and things can get really, really ugly in that way. Remember, you don't want to bring violence outside of the game because of a uh, thing that you've done in the game. Remember, you don't want to have ruined relationships over a game. So keep it uh, real, keep it uh, strictly normal and try and be a general um, emotionless spy. Try and just be a regular player of the game. Don't want to be involved in politics. Don't want to be involved in other people's personal business. That is purely the way that you be a good spy. If you're a fantastic spy, you know that you're going to return back to your corp no matter what happens. If you do end up getting a girlfriend, you're going to get her to defect with you. Yeah, it's a different story. If you're that manipulative and that good at it, then go for it. And that's how you manage to win over in being a spy, if you're that type of a spy. Now, there are many types of spies. I've only listed three basic types here. But there's so much you can do as a spy. You can actually collapse entire alliances. You can win a war without ever firing one shot against the corp. OP4S being an example. Generally, I do trust that the spy story is correct. And that one of those leaders is the spy who literally took them all down. And he might have left as well. I'm not 100% on that. You know, it's so complicated to explain the situation, especially when you're talking about someone spying, because it's like, no, you know, this happened, that happened. And right now I don't have any further information, so I can only relate on what I was told two weeks ago. And this is so outdated information that I can't give you all the nitty gritty details. I can't tell you whether the spy is still within the corp or out of the corp as well. And I suspect that they're still in the corp because with the amount of damage they did, they aren't yet finished. They're most probably going to force them to try and take on Genesis Federation in one more big push. Or they're going to push for them to fight Genesis and wreck everybody in OP4S being the end of the opposing force alliance. And that will be the end of it and they will disappear from the map. All of those OP4S or Ops Force or opposing force, all of those alliances will just disappear overnight and they have different names. So that's what the possibility when it comes to all of this, and that's how effective an a spy can be, how effective a spy can be if he plays his roles correctly. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've had a good time with all of this. Okay, wait, before I do end it off, I'd like to ask you all if you do have montages of your kills. So basically, if you've made a montage of all your kills in the game, you have nice kill montages, and you're willing to allow someone to comment on them, between 5 and 10 minute montages, contact me. Send me a message over Discord, over WhatsApp. I will, send, I will set a link to your video over YouTube and I will watch your YouTube video and comment on everything that happens within it. And that is something that I'm willing to do. It's a nice fun part of the game, but it's only within EVE Echoes that I will do it. If you show me EVE Online information and EVE Online gameplay, I'm going to figure it out because of footings, unless you have the same footings that you have here in EVE on, on EVE Echoes in EVE Online and you're playing the exact same setup. Then I might not be uh, glued up enough to figure it out. But if you do get your nice collage together, a nice montage, send it to me. I will put it up on a nice video and I will talk about everything. I will talk about all of the kills that you have. I'll talk about any flaws that happen in the fight where it could have been done better, what the opponent could have done better. But generally, if you're showing me all of your kills of an opponent, you're going to get 90% of the commentary in your favor, and the opponents are going to get 90% of the negative feedback as well. They might get one or two positive reviews, like they did the right thing 
a right thing turning at this point. They're approaching the gate, smart move. They could have managed to jump out. They didn't activate all their systems. Unfortunately, it played against them. All those things are comments which will be given from me. And yeah, that's what I want to do. I hope that I do get a chance to do it. You don't have to give me information other than that if you do want it to be just the, the YouTube videos, the montages. So yeah, I'm hoping to see all of these things. I hope you have a good day and thank you all for watching my channel.